Ladies and gentlemen, good Python library. It's awesome, especially if you want to do something like continuous integration, continuous delivery, then you can create a small Python script that can uh, clone repositories, that can check out code, that can tag your code, that can actually, you can actually also do commits. I would not recommend you to do, to make automatic uh, commits because uh, a commit should always be with someone's credentials so you can see who did what uh, at any point in time. But it is possible with this uh, Git Python library. It's awesome and I want to show you now, how it works. First of all, um, first of all, let me just show you the. Here we have here's here's a website Git Python uh, right here, and here we have the. Yeah, this is a tutorial at uh, Git Python. Read the docs. Io. Uh, I really like this URL. Read the docs. Yes, we will. We will maybe or maybe we will just. Uh, uh, yeah, read the most uh, necessary to get up and running. That's usually what we do, right? So, um, yeah, so that's it. Maybe it's just me who find it funny when, uh, that you will. But um, I'm using Anaconda. If you, uh, if, you don't want, if you don't know how to use Anaconda, watch one of my other videos where we install Anaconda and, um, yeah, and where we use that. Um, so first of all, I want to create a new environment with Anaconda, and I do that by writing conda minus minus name, uh, create, like this, create eight. My one's name, and I give it a good name like um, uh, uh, Git Python Python demo demo like this. Yeah, Git Python demo, and then um, then we write Python equals three dot nine like this. I have my cutter sheet uh, sheet uh, right here. If um, if I forget something, then I have my cutter cheat sheet right there right here. You can also find them on. Um, you can find them on Anaconda's website if you search for it. It's quite good in the beginning. Then you can, um, then you know, yeah, until you remember how to create environments with Anaconda. You, of course, you can also use pip if you if you prefer that. So that is totally up to you. But now we have created a new environment. Let us activate it. Activate Anaconda. Activate and then iPhone demo. iPhone demo like this. So right now it's activated. Now I want to install uh, the library, and it's actually just uh, named git install. Yeah, so like this. So now I've installed the library. Now let us go to uh, PyCharm. I'm using that as an IDE. And right now I have a project regarding Django. I, I created another video about that. Um, I've actually I've created uh, several videos about Django. Um, but let us just create a new project. I want to create a new project for this right here. And I want it to should it be pure Python. What should it be? Yeah, it is, should be pure Python. And I want to name this project exactly uh, Git Python demo. I like my environments to be named the same as uh, my project. I want to create a new environment and I do not want to I do not want to use uh, virtual imp I want to use WSL actually so actually I don't want to use any of these right here previous I want to set up a new uh, interpreter I want to choose WSL because I'm using WSL or else uh, my uh, or else it would not work my, my environment, content environment will not work because I'm using WSL. If I don't go and choose WSL from the Python interpreter list, and then I want to find my environment, which is under home, my initials, and then Anaconda, because that's why I installed Anaconda. Then I have a folder named ints right there, and then we have the Git Python demo right there. Then we have a bin folder right there, and in there we have a Python uh, we have the Python executable, the Python executable, which is right here somewhere. It's right there. I press OK, and then I press OK again. And we do not want to create it in that folder. No, 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 no. We want to create it on the WSL uh, drive, or else we will get in trouble. We do not want to use, we only want to use our Windows system for stuff that actually um where we actually need the drivers the good drivers on, on windows uh, etc so i want to go to mike's projects there right there okay and then we create a new folder named git python demo like this 
and create. Thank you very much. This window. Thank you very much, PyCharm. And I'm using uh, just for info. You, the PyCharm comes in two versions: a community edition and a professional edition. The difference is that in, in the professional edition, you also get support for HTML and JavaScript. And if when you are playing with the uh, with, when you're playing playing with Git Python, uh, Git Python library, of course, you do not need to. Uh, you, you only need the community edition for doing that. Uh, then we get a lot of stuff right here. We get a method, etc. Let us just we can use yeah, we can use this file that we already got right here. Print line, just print, and say we test one, two, three, up and running. And let us right click and then run that program right there. We have test one, two, three right there. So what we want to do now, we want to import it like this just to see that it actually exists. And what what can we do now? Because we already have we already have the library installed because we did that in the, inside the environment. And since we chose the interpreter inside that environment, that means that the, um, that that means that now we have access to the Git library. That is why I liked. That is why I started with my uh, creating my Anaconda environment, activating my Anaconda environment, and and then installing the Git library inside my Anaconda environment. And as I said before, you can use a virtual imp instead if you want to. You can also use pip. I just prefer to use uh, Anaconda. Uh, that was not what I wanted to show you. I wanted to actually. I wanted to. Uh, yeah, okay. But what can we do now? Um, uh, I want to check out. Actually, I want to clone. I want to clone a project. So my repo equals the, the first thing we always need to do is we need to create a, a representation of our repo, and we do that by writing something like this: clone from. Of course, if you had a, a local repository already, and here we need the, some kind of uh, remote URL to define that, and then we have a local uh, folder right here. Of course, we need to set these two to something. Um, so I'll just go to, I'll go to GitHub and then I will create a new repository. So let me just do that GitHub like this. And here we go. New, create a new repository. Git Python demo, or just Git Python, that's okay. Yeah, Git Python demo. Like this, create a repository, it's public, that's fine. And then I can press this button right here, copy. Then I go back to my project right here. So the remote URL is this. And then we have a local folder that could be tmp slash Python demo, like this. So that in my, now, now in my TMP folder, I know that I have read write access in that folder, so it should be able to create that folder automatically. And now I am um, uh, now I am uh, now I am um, um, I'm cloning it, and of course I could also check out a certain branch if I want to. And I just write uh, my repo, and then I get that checkout, and then um, Mike's branch like this, Mike's branch. And first of all, uh, we're not done yet because we need to in, we need to call this code right here. We need to create some uh, the initial upload. We need to initialize our Git repo right here. In it, uh, Git .sh. That's the shell scripts. Uh, yeah, we would put that now. So we run this one right here. It's X, and I'm gonna say in Git. And run in it. So now what we're doing, we actually we're creating our first commit, and then we are pushing to the code right there. And what I want to do now is I want to I want to check out, and I use um, I use all my C shell, so I can just write gco instead of git checkout, uh, and then I write minus minus b for uh, branch. That means it will automatically create a branch if it does not exist, and then Mike's uh, branch right here. And then we create something new, an extra file, new file, and uh, my texts. txt. We write something inside this uh, run right here. And then we add the file, another file, like this. And if I don't know which branch I'm on, I can, of course I can see it in my ID in, in, in the right corner. I'm covering for that right now, so I can actually just write git branch, and I can see that right now I'm in OS. 
on, on uh, my branch and let me push this. And of course, we should also set an upstream like this. Copy, paste. Yes. So now I've now so now I've um, yeah. So now we have I have two branches and I've uh, uh, uploaded this code to GitHub. So now let us see if we can actually uh, if we can check out the uh, the code. It complains a bit here. What does it say? No module named Git. Uh, I think I installed Git Python the wrong way. It is actually named Git Python, so I'll need to do that. But that is easy. Now I go to my terminal right here. Then I say uh, conta install or Python like this. It was not Git. Uh, the package name was not Git. It was it was Git Python. I, I did not remember it correctly. So now let's go here. See what happens. Let us see if we can run this program right here. That was no errors, at least, even though that I think we need to uh, need to run a re-index of the in, yeah the, but uh, it actually it, it ran without any errors. So let us go to our terminal to see if we actually have a project. And then if I go to GP, does that the folder now exist? Python. Yes, it does. And here we actually have it. So it actually worked, even though that uh, right now, uh, until is a little bit confused, I probably have to close down my, my project and then open it up again. Or maybe I just have to change interpreter. Interpreter. Interpreter, right there. Maybe if I change it to something else, and then if I change it back again to Git Python demo, like this, we will know now that there's actually a library named Git. It should be able to... It does not. So... I think I need to close my Python, my PyCharm, and then start it up again. But no matter what, the, the Python code is valid, because we can actually see that actually here I have my... Um, if I go to... If I go to GP, and then... It's my demo, then I have all of my code right here. Another thing we could actually do was we could actually... Um, we could also check... Um, what, what else should we actually try to do? Yeah, we should actually check out uh, the correct branch because right now, which branch are we on? Oh, we are actually already in Mike's branch, so that is actually awesome. So that part also worked. That's actually it. Where's the PyCharm? But well, that is welcome to PyCharm. I want to start this up again. I just wanted the red, red mark to disappear. That's why I reopened the uh, PyCharm, but the code is valid. Um, and let us see if it knows Git now. Sometimes if you add packages behind, uh, that should be okay. This is a little bit weird. More actions. Isn't a rebuild or something like that code? It's in a project somewhere. Okay, but no matter what, I, I'll find out why PyCharm doesn't like this right now. But um, the, the code is correct. But as, and as, as you can see, when we actually told, PyCharm to actually run that file with the with the with the interpreter inside the Conda's uh, Git Python demo environment, uh, then it actually worked exactly as it should. So it's just an error that PyCharm cannot find this right now. Uh, I'll figure I'll figure that one out. But uh, no matter what, what I want to show you here today and uh, what I want to show you right now is that you can actually oh now it disappeared. Okay, I just need to complain a bit about it, then um, then it actually disappears. So now actually PyCharm actually found out that this uh, this library is actually uh, available. And what I, what else happened right here? So uh, I checked out, I cloned the I cloned the repository, and I also I changed the branch to yeah, Mike's branch. And as I said before, you can do all, all the usual Git uh, stuff uh, that you want to do inside the um, yeah inside your Python script, and it's, it's very very awesome for. Uh, continuous integration scripts if you want to do something where you check out some code or check which branches exist or um, yeah if you want to look for a, certain, a specific branch if that branch is not there maybe you want to build uh, the, the, the development environment uh, the development branch which is already always there uh, stuff like that um, this this library is awesome for that try it out git python dot read the docs dot io 
and the documentation i also think that the documentation is quite good and there's a lot of stack overflow issues on git python so there's a lot, there's a lot of help to to get for the most uh, common uh, usages and it's also a library that is uh, quite uh, quite um, mature uh, i think it was was its version three something right now you can see the versions right here and we also have um, yeah there's there's of course a change list right there um only good things to say about this um, this library git pycharm try it out try it out try it out thank you very much for watching have a great evening. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.